James O'Brien on LBC. Um, I mentioned earlier this week that I would be speaking to Peter Corr, who is organising the National Rejoin March set, set to unfold in London on Saturday. And uh, interestingly enough, up he pops during a, a motor rating, motor related conversation because peter i can exclusively reveal is uh is not a most is not an obviously paid up member of the tofu eating wokarati he is uh he's a lorry driver who has kindly scheduled a lay-by stop in order to contribute to the program today peter why the national rejoin march and first of all why you Hi, James. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, <laughs> thanks for that description, too. Um, the National Rejoin March, because it's it's really urgent that we get on with this now. Um, why me? I think because... I don't, I'm almost doing it as service. I'm ex-army, yeah. and when, when you're in the army, it, service to your country is kind of embedded in you. Um, so it almost feels like, <clears throat> having left the army, I'm, I'm extending my service to the country by doing this. Um, so a, pa- think, a patriotic duty is what you're describing. 100% pa- patriotic, yeah. yeah. Um, and as, a, as a working <clears throat> class guy, if you like, who grew up in council estates, when in the army, come out, I'm just doing lorry driving. Um, I, I, all the people I see and speak to in the real world are working class. Yeah. And it's us, and, and, and middle class too, but the lower end of the middle class, if you like. Um, and it's us who are really most affected by the effects of Brexit mm. um, in terms of inflation, especially uh, the cost of living crisis is massively amplified in this country by um, Brexit, leaving the single market. Um, so I feel like it's it's my duty, really, because a, a lot of uh, people that you see and hear in the media all the time are always talking about polit- political theory and yeah. and things like that. And, and that just doesn't matter to to most people's real everyday lives. Um, so I'm deliberately trying to present the National Joy March from the perspective of, of real people's lives. And really. how's your sector been affected? Because truck drivers were, were held up as one of the few areas where life would improve as a consequence well, of leaving the European well, Union. Well, it hasn't. Oh. Um, w- wages, in some respects, have gone up, uh, but not not they certainly haven't matched inflation for starters. So sure. wages haven't gone up technically when, when you consider our wages have gone up less than the cost of stuff going up has. Mm. Um, so even though that's technically true, it isn't really true. Um, and working conditions have actually gone down because of Brexit. Right. So um, a lot of small companies, I used to work for a small company um, and they went bust because they really struggled getting drivers uh, through leaving the single market, yeah. um, which meant I had to go and do basically the same job for the same money, but for a big company, uh, which is further away from my house to start, so I'm spending more fuel to get there. Um, and, uh, I'm, you know, we're treated like a number now, whereas mm. the company I worked for before, I, I spoke to the director every day, really, yeah. um, on a real personal basis, and now we're treated like a number, we're treated a bit poop. Um, <laughs> And well, it's it diminished really your it's diminished your working totally. life. Yeah, I hear yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. How does how does a lad driving a lorry go about setting up a a, 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 a march, a national march? What, what I mean, what's the actual process, Peter? Um, lots of Zoom calls from the cab of my lorry because I'm actually in the lorry Monday morning and don't get home till Friday evening, so I do what's called tramping. Right, uh, sleeping in the lorry. Yes, uh, so. Ironically, that gives me a bit more spare time than if I was going home every night. Uh, oh, I see. To yes, I guess it like does. Of done. course, yes. Yeah. So, uh, and then it's just going through getting permissions in place with the Met Police, GLA, and... Um, you make it and, sound quite straightforward. I wouldn't know where to start. <laughs> well, I didn't. It's just, last year was our first March, and um, right. it's going to be an annual thing, basically. We want to put rejoin on the agenda and then keep it there until yes. we're back in the EU. Um so last year was the first time I've ever done anything like this. I mean, it all came from setting up a Facebook group originally. Um, yes. Because in 2019, when I could, when it was obvious Boris Johnson was going to win that election and we were going to leave, I thought, well, we can't give up. That can't be it. It can't be over. Um, so what's the next step? Well, 
campaign to rejoin the EU then. So I just set up a little Facebook group and it absolutely ballooned to have thousands and thousands of people to the point where I needed people to come and help me sort of manage it. Um, and even during COVID, there were so many calls every day saying, what are we doing? Why are we allowing this to happen? We should be out in the street. Mm. Um, and I was like, you're right, we really should be out there marching and, and campaigning for this now. No matter how long it takes, we need to be there now showing the presence and showing that we're not going anywhere. Well, you're converting we... me because you know we've been in touch privately and you, you, you know I, I wasn't convinced that it, that it was worth doing anything yet, but you're certainly swinging my pendulum, Peter, as a, with, with, with every sentence that you are to tell people listening how they can get involved on Saturday. Um, we're starting at the bottom of Park Lane, so outside the Hilton Hotel. Uh, we're going to start the march at 1pm, so sort of be there before then. Um, bring EU flags or flags from other European countries um, or even Union Jack or Scotland, England flag, whatever you like. Just Wales. bring flags. Don't forget Wales. I'll get, I'll get Wales, letters. Wales, Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> there are people coming. Wessex. I can, there are people coming from Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland and plenty from England too. Fantastic. Um, everybody's welcome. We've also got people from European countries. We were out flying last week actually and um, yeah. we, I met up with some people from France and Italy who are both over here and I said, we were saying, you know, are you here next week? And they were saying, yeah, and, and they're going to come too and bring that flag. Um, because I, I do totally believe in the European family. Um, mm. Again, probably from the army. I was in Germany three years uh, and we did exercises with various European countries' armies. Um, and it, it, you do feel like a European family. We, they're our closest neighbours and allies. It's ridiculous the way we're othering them and making them look like the enemy. It's, it's really ridiculous. But anyway, sorry. So we're going to start. Say sorry. It's lovely. We're going we're gonna to march through uh, London past Trafalgar Square and then past number 10. And I'm desperately trying to stop people from swearing as we walk past number 10 because there's going to be children there. Yes, well uh, done. And what, do, you, do you have any idea of numbers, Pete? What's the kind of... I don't know. So uh, we just wait the, and see. The, the biggest number we had from the police last year was 50,000, and that was blew our expectations, considering, you know, we didn't have an advertising budget. We haven't this year, to be fair. Sure. Um, but all of the numbers this year are bigger, so we raised more money to get it done. There's more coaches being organised to come this year. We've had more media coverage, including right, right now with you. Um, so all of the numbers are way bigger than last year so we're expecting the number of people to be there to be hopefully way bigger too i wish you well you know i do i can't come this Thank year you. Yeah, I, I i told you that already but it's not, it's not through um reluctance it's through circumstance so can i book you now for next year i'll, I'll have to talk to my agent <laughs> well first i'll have to get an agent and then, and then I'll have to talk to my agent about it. But yeah, I am a lot more minded than I was before we met, Peter, and more power to you. I, I, I'll just read you this because I think it'll tickle you before you go. It says, come off it, James, an ex-army truck driver. It's so woke, you might as well be speaking to Greta Thunberg. <laughs> <laughs> I dressed up as great from Burger Weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Mind how you go. Drive carefully, Peter. Thank, thank you very much. Peter Corr, the organiser of the National Rejoin March, framing it there as a, as a form of patriotism that, of course, Nigel Farage wouldn't understand if it slapped him round the face with a wet fish. James O'Brien on LBC.